Um, so this tutorial is for um, interpreting photos for your examination and um, focusing particularly on coastal weathering and mass movement. Um, so let's start with these two photos. Uh, the top photo there is um, clearly a rock fall or a landslide here and there and there um, which has probably been caused by um, some sort of undercutting at the base um, making the top half of the cliff um, destabilize and therefore it collapses very quickly. This is a very fast mass movement. In contrast at the bottom photograph we have um, slumping which is a very slow mass movement. Usually when you have cliffs made up of glacial deposits, a very soft geology which can absorb rainwater, it comes very heavy plus a bit of undercutting um, at the base of the cliff creates what we call rotational landslips and the cliff moves very slowly along a slip plane. It rotates just like you would slump in your chair at school. It rotates very slowly um, down the cliff in stages. One there and there's another one going on here and there's a very small one going on there and they will slowly slump down and eventually um, become eroded away. So we have slow at the bottom here and a fast mass movement at the top. Uh, this is a lovely um, cliff line, um, Hunt Stanton in North Norfolk, England. Um, clear evidence of rockfall here, um, probably caused by undercutting of a relatively softer geology um, below. And those of you with uh, very keen eyes again, what can you see at the top here? You can see some weathering going on, probably biological weathering, um, which helps to weaken the, the top of the cliff, which encourages um, um, further um, erosion below. And finally, let's take a look at this photo. And the question is, how many processes of weathering can you spot? Well, you can infer all sorts. It's chalk or limestone, so you can assume there's some kind of carbonation process going on here. The weak carbonic acid in rainwater mixing with the calcium carbonate will weaken the cliff. Uh, at the bottom of the the stack here, uh, you can see an area um, of flat rock and you can infer that perhaps some kind of biological weathering is going on here by these very small um, shell-like creatures called piddocks which drill into the, the, the flat rock there. Uh, you may also infer that there's probably some seaweed that you could see at low tide and the seaweed is biologically weathering the rock there also. Um, because you can see um, bedding planes and joints, you can assume that there will be some um, crystallization going on, weakening the rock further, and then the biological weathering. Now, you can't see much grass, but you could assume that there might be some vegetation here or even here, uh, weakening the top of the cliff. And then we come to the concept of these sort of um, holes in the cliff here. And you could quite rightly inf infer that birds like puffin uh, may have created those as habitats, again, weakening the cliff. And all of this, um, or most of it comes under the umbrella of sub-aerial weathering. So remember, look out for the finer detail in the photographs, which you can infer to help access the highest marks possible.